Today is Palm Sunday, a time to reflect and begin our journey with Jesus to the cross. We've already read this passage of scripture about his triumphal entry. Specific instructions were given to a couple of his disciples to bring him a donkey. Well, not just any donkey. This donkey also was chosen for a special purpose. And this one donkey, a foal, a baby, would have the awesome privilege to carry the Son of God, the King of Peace, Jesus Christ, into Jerusalem. Can you imagine being in the crowd that day? Do you remember in 1997 when the Queen came to Newfoundland? She visited a number of points throughout the island. For such royalty to come into town, there had to be a lot of preparation. Roads were paved, crowds gathered for her arrival, many dressed in their best clothes and waved the flag with pride as she stepped into their presence. My husband tells me of his remembrance of the day that the Queen came to Bonavista. He was a cub leader then. And with his group of cubs, all in uniform, of course, the leaders were intentional to coach these young boys to talk properly. And if the queen spoke to them, that they would have to use their manners, and that they were to reply, yes, your majesty. Indeed, they were honored that the queen would approach them and speak to these young chaps. You can imagine how excited they were. The queen came right to them face to face, and spoke to the children. Well, all the prep, all the advice vanished as one after the other, the boys responded with, y'all, y'all, y'all. Jesus didn't arrive that day by horse and chariot. He didn't arrive on a great stallion, but on a donkey. The roads weren't paved. They were dusty. He didn't enter town with the greatest of celebrations with fireworks. But there was a parade of sorts. People gathered. They spread out their cloaks on the road, and others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. They went ahead of him, as well as following him. And they were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. But not everyone knew him. And that's why he rides 
<coughs> on a donkey. Think about it. A donkey. He don't demand attention from the crowds. He isn't arrogant. But they follow him willingly. They gather in the peace of his presence. Sometimes I read ahead in our daily bread devotional. And this time, I've committed myself not to read ahead, but to save each devotion for the day that it is assigned. And I just want to share with you this morning that how God leads us. And I know that he leads me this morning. But this one, if you haven't read it, it's called who are you? And I'll just, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Jesus entered Jerusalem to shouts of praise from the people. When others throughout the city asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. He didn't come claiming special privileges, but in humility, he came to give his life in obedience to his Father's will. The words Jesus said and the things he did commanded respect. Unlike insecure rulers, he never demanded that others respect him. His greatest hours of suffering appeared to be his lowest points <coughs> of weakness and failure. Yet the strength of his identity and mission carried Jesus through the darkest hours as he died for our sins so that we might live in his love. He is worthy of our lives and our devotion today. Do we recognize who he is? Written by David McCassman. Do we recognize who he is? This is only the beginning of this week. There will be the betrayal of a friend, the denial of one he trusted, and Good Friday, the crucifixion, is yet to come. He has first and foremost come for one purpose, and we know he will fulfill it, because today we don't consider putting him back on the cross. He's risen. But we reflect of his journey to the crucifixion and resurrection. We're foretold in Isaiah 53. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our, our sorrows, Yet we consider him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. We 
all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Verse 7 says, He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so did he not open his mouth. See, even before Jesus was born, we were told in God's word that he was coming. That there would be a Savior. And today we celebrate because there is a Savior. Do you know the peace he brings today? Jesus says in Matthew 11 and 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. He wants us to come to him. He wants to give us rest. And when we rest, what do we accomplish? In the absence of worry and care, do we not feel peace? We often have to make decisions and choices. And I expect that we have all said we felt peace with it. From time to time, that's sometimes what we say. Well, I just felt at peace with it. That's a happy place to be, at peace. But true peace is only available through Jesus Christ, our King of Peace. Salvation is only available through Him. Salvation is only made possible through His fulfillment of dying on the cross and resurrecting from death. He is what Easter is all about. Easter is all about new life, second chances. Do you need a second chance this morning? Do you need another opportunity to confess your sins to Jesus and ask him to forgive you? John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus comes to bring peace to the consumer. We don't have to strain to see him from a distance. He isn't surrounded by bodyguards as the queen would be. We don't have to be a particular way, uh, dressed in a particular way, or speak <coughs> in a particular way. Jesus accepts us just as we are. Second Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. I invite you to accept Jesus Christ this morning and the peace that he brings. You're in his presence this very moment. Draw on his peace this morning and reflect on upon the events of what this holy week represents. This Palm Sunday, join the parade and shout Hosanna in the highest. Since coming to know Jesus, 
How has he brought you peace? How has he brought you peace? Do we recognize Jesus this morning? Seek him this morning, and he will give you peace. Shall we go in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you because without Christmas, there could be no Easter. And Lord, we thank you because you loved us so much that you provided your Son, your greatest gift of love, to die for us. Even when we didn't deserve it. You provided your son as an offering to purchase salvation for each and every one of us. And you come to bring us peace and this morning we pray, Lord, that you would search our hearts. Lord, that you would reveal to us the things that are keeping us from being as close to you as we could be. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to those who don't know you. Speak to them a little louder. Lord, I pray that you would place people in their lives who would speak to them about you. And not only in speaking, but in the way that we live, as you lived, the things you did, that's where you received your respect. That's where you gained your attention, showing love and going amongst those who would be the outcasts. Eating with the sinners. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be examples of you. And I pray most importantly, Lord, that this morning we would each know your peace that comes from making things right with you. Father, I pray, Lord, this morning that as we sing, as we pray, Lord, that people will feel free to come to your mercy seat, to accept you, to come and pray. Pray for their families, pray for their loved ones, pray for their friends, their co-workers, pray for their neighborhoods, pray for the schools, Pray for the unsaved. And pray for their concerns. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will help us to listen to your voice and to be obedient to you. And I pray, Lord, that we would accept the peace that you want us to have. I pray in Jesus' name.